Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to make a video of this African journalist questioning US security advisor in the White House press briefing. It's a very interesting conversation and they're talking about the Africa-US summit and she's questioning what benefits will bring to Africa. Now let's get started. Yes. Thank you, Jake. Uh, in Africa, we have the perception that the U.S. looked down Africa. So with this summit, uh, what makes you feel so comfortable or confident that it will be different? So comparing to the preview uh, summit, which didn't bring much result for African countries, what are you seeing in this new summit that you can transmit to the African people that are watching? Every African now are looking on this summit and expecting that the U.S. really at this time look in Africa in a different way. What makes you confident that this time will be different? I would say three things uh, make me confident that we will have a positive result from the summit. The first is we are bringing the resources to the table in significant numbers. And if you compare what the United States is committing over the next three years to what any other country is committing, I think we stack up extremely favorably. I like the fact that he's not even questioning her question because we can all agree that all the Africa-US summits have been completely useless. It's quite funny that he wants to talk about we're going to bring in resources. No one wants your resources. He's going to be talking about, oh, we're going to give more aid to Africa and nonsense like that. No one cares about that. If we take a look at trade, because that's what matters to people, right? You can see from this graph that trade in 2014 was at its highest, about 140 billion. Currently, it's about 40 billion. Only 6% of Africa's total imports come from the US. 5% of our imports come from India. So US is not that important trading partner to Africa. And what US buys from us is natural resources like Europe. That's why they are not important partners because Africans want to improve our economy. We want to move from selling raw products. We want to add value to our natural resources. That's what Africans want. That's what you do not want to talk about. And you're going to talk about US aid and nonsense like that. No one cares. Now compare this, right? You can see here that in 2004, trade with US was way higher than with China. And currently, China is like three, four times bigger than trade we have with US. So if you want to improve something, improve the trade. But they don't want to do that. And I guarantee you, they're not even going to mention trade in any of this discussion. It's going to be about aid. It's going to be about terrorism. And it's going to be about China and Russia. Second, how did we design the agenda for this summit? It's not a, a dictation from Washington. It's not lecturing or preaching from Washington. We went to African nations themselves in the African Union and said, what are your priorities? What is your vision? And in fact, the, as I mentioned earlier, the entire first substantive session that the president will chair at the summit is on Agenda 2063. That is not an American document. It is not an American vision. It is the African Union's document and the African Union's vision. So we are lifting up African voices and African priorities in what we are doing at this summit. And the entire summit is designed around that basic ethos. That is a complete lie. I mean, I'm sure in the beginning he will say nice things like, yeah, we are committed to giving Africans what they need, African solutions to African problems. He will say all the buzzwords in the first instance. But we all know, and Joe Biden has been very clear, that this meeting is about addressing the Chinese and Russian influence in Africa. This will be Joe Biden and the US government telling us how bad China is, how bad Russia is. And they are trying to convince us to drop China and to drop Russia. If you read any of the media, all the questions to Joe Biden is, what will you do about the influence of China in Africa? How will you put these Africans in line so that they will follow the Western world instead of making their own decisions? That is the whole point of the conversation. The whole point is to lecture us. The whole point is to tell us how bad we are because we are not doing what the West wants. And if you look at the dinner the president's going to host, it is going to be uh, him with the leaders of Africa and their spouses, that small group in a room together for hours, being able to engage 
on the issues of the day. Did this man just say that they will have a dinner with the president and that is the most amazing thing? They get to be in the White House for a couple hours. Africans have never been in the White House for that long. Like, what are you talking about? This is just dumb. <laughs> It's quite normal that when leaders visit your country, they get to have a dinner with the president. And usually in the dinner, you're not supposed to talk about politics. So why did you bring up a dinner? And this is the thing, like, he has absolutely nothing to offer. He has no numbers, no nothing. So he brings up a dinner as if having a dinner with Joe Biden is an accomplishment, as if that will somehow improve the relationships between African countries and the US. If that's the best part of the whole summit, well, then that tells you everything you need to know about the summit. And then the third reason is what we talked about earlier here, which is that we have put an emphasis on implementation coming out of this summit like nobody has seen from previous summits, meaning we will actually put someone forward who is well known to Africans, respected, uh, somebody who has a history of delivering on the major issues that are of interest to African people everywhere. That's Johnny Carson. And I, I think uh, he's talking about U.S. ambassador. He used to be ambassador to Kenya, to Mozambique, to Uganda and Nigeria, among other African countries. But I don't know who respects him and I don't know what he has solved. But he's African-American. So I think this is more of like identity politics, like, yeah, you know, we're talking about Africa, so we'll just have a black person there and that will solve everything, right? So this is an identity politics-based decision because I actually thought that maybe it's somebody with like African background. I mean, the man is African-American. In that sense, he has African background. But I was just thinking about somebody who's actually done something meaningful in Africa. Maybe somebody who is actually from Africa, like he's lived there and then he moved to America and he achieved something. Somebody that people actually respect and know. I don't think anyone knows this man, and I don't think anyone cares about anything he has to do. Uh, Angolan investment. Recently, uh, President Biden announced $2 billion investment for Angola. Will there, be, will there be any more investment coming from Angola, or what the president really expects from this investment that he announced many times for Angola? So I th he really expects that you will see a, a major deployment of solar power in Angola. Uh, that was a significant... Uh, project that was facilitated by funding uh, and mechanisms from the United States government. So he's looking forward to seeing that actually come to fruition. At the summit, he will have a series of other announcements that benefit a wide range of countries in Africa, some of which also will come to the benefit of Angola. When it comes to this two billion that was supposedly given to Angola, first of all, the money doesn't go to Angola. The money goes to U.S. companies that produce solar energy technology. So at the end of the day, Joe Biden wanted to build U.S. solar panel technology and companies. So he gave those companies two billion. And then he said that, OK, when you build these things, we don't need them in U.S. So you can give them to Angola or whatever. But it doesn't create jobs in Angola. It doesn't build industry in Angola. And those solar panels, after like five, ten years, you know, there'll be issue with it and then they'll become useless. So at the end of the day, this two billion was given to US companies. It's a subsidy to US companies. It's not helping Angola in every way. So there will be more of these things that are happening. US uh, healthcare industry is going to get a lot of money out of this. Also US like gun manufacturing companies will get some deals. US army is going to get some deals. So this event, is going to be Biden pushing their own companies on us. And then he's going to be like, oh, look, we gave two billion to Angola. No, you gave two billion to your own companies. Victoria Guinness, Jake, uh, will finally the U.S. say something about the more than $19 million that the Equatorial Guinea paid to the U.S. government for vaccines, but those vaccines were never sent to Equatorial Guinea. Will this time the U.S. government say something about this money that is already in the U.S. government, but they never sent the vaccines to Equatorial Guinea and the people still waiting for those vaccines? We will have the opportunity to speak with the uh, delegation from Equatorial Guinea about any misunderstandings or misconceptions that may lie at the heart of your question. Well, that is a hell of a question. All those fancy things, we are going to support you. We will give you this. Give us the vaccine that we paid for. <laughs> I mean, shouldn't that be the first step? And this is the thing, right? These people who are hoarding vaccines, these people who've been 
given money to give vaccines, who are keeping those vaccines, those people are supposedly caring about us. Those same people are saying that we're having this event so that we can support Africans and Africa and we care so much and we are important ally and we want to close the gaps between Africa and US. But the reality is that you're not even giving us what we paid for. I will make more videos as this silly event unfolds, but trust me on this. Nothing will come out of this. This will be all about China and Russia. If African countries didn't have a relationship with China, if we didn't have a relationship with Russia, US and Biden wouldn't hold anything for us. The only reason they are even saying these nice words is because currently they need Africa more than ever before. But the reality is that Africa doesn't need US. And I hope that African leaders who are visiting US, I wish them a nice vacation. I hope that they get their mind off politics and they get to refresh. I'm sure they will meet nice people and they'll have beautiful events. And it may be a good experience for some of them. But apart from that, apart from personal experiences that some of our leaders will get, I do not expect anything to come out of this summit. But I will make more videos as more announcements come. And when we get Joe Biden's speeches, I will also comment on them as well. So do subscribe, like, share and comment.